ZFA Press Corps, and also other members of the ZFA uh, Press Corps or uh, counterpart at agencies, other agencies. Uh, this will be the joint press briefing of the National Task Force on the West Philippine Sea that's being hosted by the Department of Foreign Affairs. I am joined this, morning, this afternoon by the spokesperson of key member agencies of the task force, Assistant Director General of the National Security Council, ADG Jonathan Malaya, uh, who is in the center, uh, Colonel Medel Aguilar of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, to my immediate right, and Commodore J. Artariela of the Philippine Coast Guard. The reason for this, uh, the reason for this uh, joint press briefing is quite obvious. Uh, there has been a serious incident in the West Philippine Sea, and this is the opportunity for us to present the Philippine narrative of that incident, sans hype. Um, in the interest of time, we've agreed to organize ourselves as follows. The first to make a presentation will come from the National Security Council, and he will, uh, and he will give a child overview of the incident of August 5. He will be followed by the Armed Forces of the Philippines that will speak about uh, the August 5, uh, 2020, a human shoal incident from the AFP perspective. Then the Philippine Coast Guard will then present its Coast Guard perspective of the incident. Following the, this presentation, the DFA will then present its statement on the incident. After the presentation, there, it will be, we will be having an open forum and after that, after we've concluded most of the questions, I will also then turn the floor to the National Security Council to do the closing remarks. So in the interest of time, can I give the floor to ADG Malaya, who will then speak on, on the, what has happened in terms of the incident of August uh, the 5th. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And at the onset, allow me please to uh, Thank the Department of Foreign Affairs for hosting uh, the National Task Force West Philippine Sea today here at the Department of Foreign Affairs for a joint press briefing. Salamat po, DFA. The National Task Force on the West Philippine Sea, led by National Security Advisor Eduardo Amaño, strongly condemns the aggressive, dangerous, and unlawful actions by the Chinese Coast Guard and Chinese maritime militia vessels against Philippine chartered supply boats and Philippine Coast Guard vessels who are undertaking a regular rotation and resupply mission in Ayungan Shoal last Saturday, August 5, 2023. The Philippine vessels were subjected to repeated water cannoning and continuous dangerous maneuvers by CCG and CMB vessels placing the lives of the crew of the Philippine vessels at risk in violation of humanitarian and international law. We wish to underscore that the Philippine vessels were undertaking regular and lawful activities in support of BRP Sierra Madre LS57, a commissioned Philippine Navy vessel permanently stationed in Ayunin Shoal which is well within our continental shelf and exclusive economic zone. Because of the dangerous and unlawful tactics employed by the CCG and CNM vessels acting in concert, the second Philippine supply boat failed to bring in much needed food, water, supplies, and other provisions to the Philippine troops stationed in Ayungin Shoal. At one point, a CCG vessel blocked the way of a PCG vessel within 20 yards, a maneuver that could have resulted in a collision that was only abated by the skill and quick thinking of our Coast Guard officers. And later on, a Commodore Tariela will give us more details about that specific incident. The dangerous and illegal tactics employed which are evidenced by photos, videos, and other official reports, are a clear and unmistakable violation of domestic laws, the Convention on the International Regulations for Prevention, Prevention, Preventing Collisions at Sea, the UN Convention 
on the law of the sea own clause and the 2016 Arbitral Award, which recognizes the Philippines' rights in the West Philippine Sea. The Chinese Coast Guard and Chinese militia vessels have no right whatsoever to place a blockade or impede or otherwise control the movement of the Philippines Coast Guard and Philippine supply boats in Ayungan Shoal or anywhere else in the West Philippine Sea, especially when they are undertaking a mission to resupply our troops stationed there. While one Philippine supply boat was blocked by Chinese vessels from reaching the shoal, another Philippine supply boat was able to break the blockade and successfully delivered much needed supplies and provisions to BRP Sheramate. The National Task Force West Philippine Sea commend the valiant men and women of the AFP Western Command, the Philippine Navy, the Philippine Coast Guard, for their daring, bravery, and commitment to duty, despite all odds and despite the continuous Chinese bullying, harassment, and intimidation. We demand that the government of the People's Republic of China immediately cease and desist all its coercive, unlawful, and unacceptable activities in the West Philippine Sea. Guided by the directive of President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. in his second State of the Nation address, the Philippine government will continue to uphold its sovereign rights and preserve our nation's sovereignty and territorial integrity. And join him in assuring the Filipino people that this government will not lose any inch of our territory. We will never waver in our determination to resupply our troops stationed in Ayubin Shoal and in other Philippine occupied features. Under the leadership of President Marcos, we will uphold the implementation of the 2016 Arbitral Award in relation to our rights in the West Philippine Sea in defense of a rules-based international order. Our position is clear. The award is final and indisputable, and we firmly reject attempts to undermine it. But guided by the President, we will always pursue constant dialogue and diplomatic approaches with other claimants towards the resolution of any issue that might arise. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amy T. Balaya. I now give the floor to Colonel Nadal, the Pilar spokesperson of the Iron Forces of the Philippines, Colonel Nadal. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> I will speak uh, in behalf of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. And the focus of my uh, presentation will be on the rotations and reprovisioning missions of the Armed Forces of the Philippines involving our naval community and, of course, the PAPD ceremony. Initially scheduled on July 31 of this year. The AFP's Western Command on August 4 proceeded with its rotation and the provisioning missions to our troops at BRPD Sherman in the vicinity of Ayungin Shore, which is part of the Kalayaan Island Group, an integral part of the Philippines as well as within the Philippines' exclusive economic zone and continental shelf, and over which the Philippines has sovereign rights and jurisdiction. At around 5.25 a.m. on that day, Unaisa May 1 and Unaisa May 2 departed Naval Detachment Hostel Bay Pier in Barangay Mahili, Puerto Princesa City for the said mission. This mission was actually delayed already because uh, it was executed immediately after the two typhoons that brought uh, bad weather to be country. I'm referring to Ega and Falcon. As the preparations were going on, coordination was, was made with the Philippine Coast Guard District in Palawan for the said mission. While the Rory mission belongs to the Philippine Navy, 
the task of escorting and rendering assistance to the resupply boats within the country's territorial waters and EEC were the task given for the PCD to perform. Two multi-role response vessels, BRP Cabra and BRP Manabito, were then tasked to conduct maritime patrols and provide security assistance to the rolling mission. As shown on the screen, is the root of the raw revision. And you can imagine uh, the distance between mainland Palawan. And the, the, this will tell us that the mission is within the territorial waters extending to the area covered by under exclusive economic zone. The Rolling Mission initially reported the presence of Chinese Coast Guard vessel at the vicinity of south of Sikatuna Shore at 8 p.m. of that same day. But this time, the Chinese Coast Guard advanced closer to our country. It's around 90 plus nautical miles from Palawan. In previous uh, Rolling Mission, they, they, will, they started uh, shadowing our mission at the Escota Shore. So that's where and when the shadowing began and continued as they reached the vicinity of the Escota Shore at 6 a.m. the following day. And until they were at the vicinity 6.6 .6 nautical miles east of the north entrance of to the, uh, to the Ayungin Shore at around 9 a.m. Minutes later, the Chinese Coast Guard vessel 5304 Black UM2 or the Unaisa Me2. It was there where another Chinese Coast, China Coast Guard vessel 5201 issued a challenge and instructed the vessel of the supply boat UM2 to stop, but the latter responded with a statement. This is a resupply boat tasked by the Philippine government to bring provisions to the troops stationed in the Sierra Madre, BRP Sierra Madre. Knowing the legality, legitimacy, and importance of the raw mission, UM2 or Unaisa May 2 defied the unauthorized challenge and instruction of the China Coast Guard. And assisted by the uh, Philippine Coast Guard's BRP Malabrico, Unaisa May 1 made it to the BRP Sierra Madre despite of several attempts to block its way. What will be shown now in the video are actual footages taken by the crew of Unaisa 1, May 2. how dangerously close the China Coast Guard vessel to a smaller boat such as the Onaisa May 2. The wave generated caused by its uh, size may, cause, uh, may bring uh, unexpected result, accident, miscalculations that would harm the, the life of our people. Next video. The next video will also show to you how they tried to surround Unaisa May 2 to prevent it from accomplishing its mission. On each side are uh, two militia vessels and, of course, supported by a China Coast Guard vessel. 
This in effect restricted the movement of UM2. And again, because of uh, the situation, uh, again, it endangered the life of our people. Then. Next video. The next video will show to us how the, the water canoning happened. There are actually two videos showing that uh, what the China Coast Guard did to our people. And the last video. Anyway, uh, I will allow our friend here from the Philippine Coast Guard to narrate to you the details of the events leading to the critical moments which will show the professionalism, restraint, and discipline of our people amidst the dangerous maneuvers, water cannoning, and other unlawful acts that the China Coast Guard committed to undermine the Rore mission. We also have deployed the Philippine Navy vessels at the area to provide assistance, but they too were shadowed by People's Liberation Army Navy vessels in that area. Aboard the tourist supply boats are Philippine Navy personnel for deployment to the BRP Sierra Madre as part of the rotation scheme and more or less 17 tons of assorted cargoes composed of food, water, and other supplies for the troops reprovisioning. Unfortunately, only half of the provisions were unloaded to the BRP Sierra, Sierra Madre because only one resupply boat, the UM-1, was able to reach the BRP Sierra Madre at 11.30 a.m. on August 5, 2023. The other resupply boat, the UM-2, and its accompanying Philippine Coast Guard vessel, the MRRB-4409, were blocked and were forced to leave the area by the China Coast Guard and militia. The two supply boats arrived safely at the NDOB Pier, Barangay Bahili, Puerto Princesa City, at 6.50 p.m. yesterday. They accomplished their mission, albeit partially, but, at, but uh, we're lucky that no one was hurt in the incident. BRP Sierra Madre is a commissioned vessel of the Philippine Navy. It is therefore the Navy's responsibility to man it and maintain it for the safety of our troops deployed there. The RERE, as recognized by many countries, is a legal operation being conducted by the armed forces of the Philippines through the Philippine Navy within the country's exclusive economic zone. We will continue the RERE mission to ensure the well-being of our Marines and sailors and to perform our obligations in the region. Finally, uh, the world probably is expecting a better explanation from the China Coast Guard because right now they cannot hide they cannot just hide behind the they cannot just hide their action behind the term necessary control because their acts contradict what they are saying. Finally the AFP extends its appreciation to the bravery and commitment of all those involved in the Rory mission. 
the Western Command Armed Forces of the Philippines, the Naval Forces sent west of the Philippine Navy, the crew of the two supply vessels, and most especially to the ever-reliable Philippine Coast Guard for standing up against a much bigger and numerically stronger force to assert our sovereign rights and our jurisdiction in the West Philippine Sea. To those men, your action on that day, 5th of August 2023, was a defining moment. You have shown the world our firm resolve, not just to protect our, in our territorial integrity, but the character and discipline as well to uphold and promote the United Nations Conventions on the Law of the Sea. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel uh, Aguilar. Uh, I will now give the floor to Commander Jay uh, Tariela, spokesperson of the P uh, PCG, Philippine Coast Guard in the West Philippine Sea matter. He will speak and discuss the factual narrative of August 5, 2023, 2023 a Union Shoal incident from the perspective of the Coast Guard. Command Commodore uh, Tariela, please. Uh, thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank the Department of Foreign Affairs for hosting this press conference. Secondly, I would like to thank our media friends for coming here and joining us with this press conference. Uh, we recognize the important role of media in telling the world the factual narrative of what really happened with this uh, resupply mission. Uh, the Philippine Coast Guard was um, tasked uh, to provide security escort to the AFP char chartered supply boats. Let me emphasize that the resupply mission is actually um, a mission carried out by the armed forces of the Philippines and the Philippine Coast Guard was only asked to provide security escort. Uh, the two boats that they use is um, the Green Hull, the Uniza Maze, and the Red Hull. The Philippine Coast Guard provided two um, Coast Guard Commission vessels, uh, BRP Malapascua and BRP Cabrua. As what was initially narrated by um, Colonel Midel, um, the Philippine Coast Guard vessels um, used uh, Skoda Shoal as a rendezvous point uh, for um, us to meet the, those um, chartered boats. No? Uh, P BRP uh, Malapascua and BRP Cabra are staying in Sabina Shoal to meet the, the resupply boats. And then as um, early as um, 6.22 p.m., a day before the resupply mission, we were able to monitor China Coast Guard 5304 already staying in that particular location and waiting for the resupply mission to be executed in Sabina Shoal. The following day, 050631, the following morning, at 631 in the morning, we were able to monitor two PLA Navy vessels, PLA Navy 167 and PLA Navy 630. Uh, those are the bound numbers of those uh, PLA Navy vessels on that morning of August 5. The distance is 36.5 nautical miles east of Ayumin. In this particular slide, I can, um, I'll be showing you um, how the China Coast Guard 5304, since the time we departed um, Sabina Shoal, until such time we proceeded to uh, go into Ayungin Shoal. They have um, started uh, shadowing the Philippine Coast Guard vessel MRB 4409 and the Green Hull or the Uniza May number one. And then around 7.30 in the morning, there is another China Coast Guard that approach, which came from a Yungin Shoal. This is China Coast Guard 5201. By 8.19, we were able to monitor three China Coast Guard. China Coast Guard 4203, China Coast Guard 5201, and China Coast Guard 5402. The objective of all these three China Coast Guard vessels is to prevent the Philippine Coast Guard vessel from providing security escort to the Onaiza May or the Green Hall, Onaiza May number one. And this also the first time the China Coast Guard 5402 carried out a dangerous maneuver to block MRV 4409.
around 819, we can be able to see how China Coast Guard 5204 was able to separate the Green Hull supply boat from the Philippine Coast Guard vessel. The objective is to separate the Philippine Coast Guard vessel from those indigenous boats being used so that they can be able to prevent the Philippine Coast Guard from providing escort to those uh, supply boats. And in this photo, you can see how 5304, which is the larger Coast Guard vessel compared to the Philippine Coast Guard, to cut across between the Onaiza May and the Philippine Coast Guard 54409. Around 819, additional China Coast Guard 4203 also conducted a dangerous maneuver to prevent 4402 from advancing its position going to Ayungin. 4402 is the one escorting the other uh, supply boats, which is the Red Hull. Around 8.40, this was also a photo shown by um, Colonel Aguilar a while ago, you can see how China Coast Guard carried out a very dangerous maneuver as if they're going to ram a supply boat from behind. Around 8.48 in the morning, we were able to monitor another PLA Navy vessel, PLA Navy 630, with a distance of around 18 nautical miles from Ayungin. By 9.13 in the morning, the Philippine Coast Guard vessel had experienced this dangerous maneuver of China Coast Guard 5304. This is actually the second time that 5304 already carried out this dangerous maneuver. And this is actually the closest. Which species do you ask? 4409, sir. This is the photo. Um, this was uh, China Coast Guard 5305 carrying out dangerous maneuver against the Philippine Coast Guard vessel 4402. So a while ago it was 4409, now it's 4402. The objective of all this uh, dangerous maneuver, as I said, is to separate the Philippine Coast Guard vessel from the escorted indigenous boat. in which um, by 9.44, they were successful in separating MRRB 4409 from the Green Hall um, charter boat. That's why, as you can see, the indigenous boat appears to be on its own, no escort. Because during this time, the Philippine Coast Guard vessel is corralled by a lot of China Coast Guard vessels. By 9.51, almost the same time that they were using water cannon against the indigenous boat Green Hall or the Unaiza May number, uh, the Unaiza May, that's also the same time that the Philippine Coast Guard was also experiencing water cannon from these two China Coast Guard vessel, China Coast Guard 4203 and China Coast Guard 5305. Around 10 a.m., China Coast Guard 5305 again carried out a very, another very dangerous maneuver. <coughs> that the Coast Guard vessel 4402 has to order his stop, to stop his engine, otherwise he's going to um, uh, ram the China Coast Guard 5305. China Coast Guard 5201 again um, took advantage of the Philippine Coast Guard being um, distant from that of indigenous boat 
That's why they were able to successfully again uh, use their water cannon against this indigenous boat. Around 10 in the, 10, um, in the morning, 13 nautical miles southeast of Ayungin, we were able to monitor three PLA Navy vessels. PLA Navy 527, 630, and 629. All of these PLA Navy vessels are just uh, stationed on those um, areas, uh, appearing to be waiting for um, instructions. Around 10.30 in the morning, China Coast Guard created, um, executed again another dangerous maneuver uh, to prevent the Philippine Coast Guard vessels from attempting to get near the indigenous boats once again. While the two Philippine Coast Guard vessels were attempting to escape the ramming, the blocking, and the dangerous maneuver of the, the PLA, uh, Philippine Coast Guard vessels, uh, the China Coast Guard vessels. It's a good thing that uh, still one of our uh, supply boats was able to reach uh, LS 57 around 11 o'clock in the morning. Around 12 o'clock of August 5, the Philippine Coast Guard uh, vessel received a call from the other uh, supply boats, the Red Hull supply boats, which were not able to um, enter the Ayungin Shoal. They requested, uh, that vessel requested the Philippine Coast Guard vessel uh, to attempt once again um, in entering the shoal. But unfortunately, uh, since the China Coast Guard also topped two Chinese maritime militia vessels, besides from the six China Coast Guard vessels, um, this indigenous boat was not able to enter the Ayungin Shoal. This is the photo of the Chinese maritime militia, uh, appearing to be Chinese fishing vessel. But in this particular operation, we can actually conclude that this Chinese fishing vessel is not just merely a uh, fishing vessel, but a Chinese maritime militia taking orders from the Chinese Coast Guard to support their operations in blocking our supply. Around 1 p.m., the Philippine Coast Guard vessel for, uh, BRP Cabla is still trying to escape with um, China Coast Guard vessels. There's a, that, this vessel was surrounded by four China Coast Guard vessels during that time. When the um, uh, indigenous boat has already completed its resupply, the first um, resupply boat that uh, was able to enter, uh, we escorted them proceeding back to Sabina Shoal. And, and we noted that um, from Ayungin, go, although there is more less, lesser tension, uh, the China Coast Guard allowed us to exit Ayungin Shoal. Uh, but we noted that uh, this China Coast Guard vessel 3302 escorted us from uh, Ayungin going to Sabina. In total, we noted that there are six China Coast Guard vessels that they use um, to prevent the Philippine Coast Guard in escorting the resupply of the armed forces of the Philippines. And they also use these two Chinese maritime militia vessels, 00304 and 001. So besides from the three PLA Navy vessels that we monitored within the vicinity of Ayungin Shoal, they used six China Coast Guard vessels and two Chinese maritime militia uh, vessels. That ends my uh, briefing for what happened during the last supply. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Commodore Tariela. And, and now it's, my, it's the turn of the DFA to deliver its uh, statement. <coughs> China Coast Guard, People's Liberation Army Navy, and the Chinese Maritime Militia vessels 
took blocking and other aggressive maneuvers, including the use of a water cannon against the Philippine supply boats and Coast Guard vessels on a routine resupply mission to the BRP Sierra Madre on August 5 in an area approximately, approximately 2.9 nautical miles from Ayumin Shoal. The Philippines demands that China immediately stop its illegal activities in our maritime zones. The Department of Foreign Affairs is one with the armed forces of the Philippines and the Philippine Coast Guard in their pursuit of our shared mandate to protect and uphold our legal maritime entitlements. The DFA is making full use of our diplomatic processes and is ex exercising all possible action available to us, including the summoning of the Chinese ambassador over this incident. The resupply mission to and the upkeep of the BRP Sierra Madre are legitimate Philippine government activities in our country's exclusive economic zone, which are all in accordance with international law, particularly UNCLOS. As a low tide elevation, a union shoal can neither be the subject of a sovereign claim, nor is it capable of appropriation under international law, a fact affirmed by the 2016 Arbitral Award. China cannot, China cannot therefore lawfully exercise sovereignty over it. China's illegal exercise of maritime law enforcement uh, powers interference with a legitimate Philippine rotation and resupply mission, including its aggressive use of water cannon against our vessels, and any other activity that infringes upon our sovereign rights and jurisdiction over a human shoal are violations of international. Thank you. That ends the DFA statement. We will now proceed to the open forum. Uh, to allow many journalists to ask, as many journalists to ask as different questions, we will allow each journalist one question with one follow-up. Uh, please go direct to your question, and then, um, uh, and doing so, before you start questioning, can you actually identify yourself and the media outfit that you belong to? Uh, please, uh, can we have the first question, please? Yes, Chris, Tristan. 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 Hi, good afternoon po. Um, Ambassador Tess, maybe for the BFA. Pa, President Marcos uh, earlier said that uh, there's already a note verbal given to Chinese Ambassador Wang Silian. So could you elaborate on whether uh, we've already sent a note verbal or a diplomatic protest over this incident? Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. How, how was it? Yes, a note what? verbal has actually been issued. Uh, and it was issued uh, after, during the summon of the Chinese ambassador by Undersecretary Lazaro this morning. Mm -hmm. that, so in terms of statistics, uh, yeah, just a while ago I mentioned in our chat that as of uh, 7 of, uh, August 2023, uh, we had a certain number. But so as of August 7 now, at 11.30 a.m., the Philippines has filed 445 diplomatic protests since 2020. For 2023, we have filed 35 diplomatic protests. This includes the note verbal hand delivered during the summoning of the ambassador. Okay. So, Ma'am, uh, Foreign Affairs Secretary Enrique, uh, sorry, see si Yusek Lazaro po ang nag yes. hand over in one. Uh, Yusek Lazaro, allow me to give more details about the summoning of the ambassador. Yusek Lazaro conveyed to the Chinese ambassador this morning the strong protests of the Philippine government on the blocking and water cannon operation by the Chinese Ghost Guard and Chinese maritime militia vessels against Philippine indigenous boats conducting regular rotation and resupply and humanitarian mission to provide food, fuel, and other basic necessities to the Philippine military personnel stationed on the BRP in Sierra Madre on a Union Shoal. The blocking and water cannoning, inc ca cannoning incident against and around the Philippine vessels on August 5 lasted for over an hour. The Undersecretary reiterated to the Chinese side that the Ayungin Shoal is a low tide elevation that cannot be appropriated or subjected, or subjected to, um, to sovereignty claims. 
The final and binding 12 July 2016 award in the South China Sea arbitration expressly stated that Ayungin Shoal is within the exclusive economic zone and continental shelf of the Philippines, over which the Philippines has sovereign rights and jurisdictions. The DFA further called the chi China's attention that its actions are likewise contrary to China's flag state obligation under the 1972 International Regulations for Preventing Collisions at Sea, which requires states to take measures necessary to ensure safety at sea and prevent ship collisions. The CCG vessel's dangerous maneuvers restricted the Philippine vessel's navigational path, thereby increasing the risk of collision in violation of Rules 2, 7, and 8 of Colrex. The DFA, DFA firmly asked China to, one, direct its vessels to stop their illegal action against Philippine vessels and to stop interfering in legitimate Philippine activities. Two, comply with its obligation under international law, including the 1982 UNCLOS and the 2016 award and the South China Sea arbitration in the 1972 Colvers and adhere to its commitments under the dock. During the summon, the Philippines through the FAA also expressed disappointment that the DFA was unable to reach its counterpart to the maritime communication mechanism for several hours while the incident was occurring and expressed the hope that the Chinese side will reciprocate with the same sense of urgency the communication initiated by the Philippines as has been demonstrated by the Philippines when receiving communications initiated by the Chinese side. At the same time, I'd also like to uh, inform that as we summoned the, press, the, the ambassador, our ambassador in China, in Beijing, also issued or handed a protest note to the CN Foreign Ministry as of this morning. Question, please. Uh, we go this side one. Uh, Celerina, please, and then up. Uh, uh, uh. Good afternoon, po. Um, Ma'am, with this uh, recent incidents, or anyone could answer, um, with the continuous bullying of China against the Philippines and this recent incident, how is the relationship between the Philippines and China now? Um, okay. <laughs> We value our relations with China, and we hope that they too value the relations with the Philippines. But clearly this incident undermines efforts to strengthen mutual trust and confidence, a crucial element in friendly relations among states between our countries. And it does provide tension in our bilateral relations. As we repeatedly said, the rotation and resupply mission was a routine activity conducted by the PCG and the Philippine, Philippine Navy within the Philippine AEZ in line with international law, specifically UNCLOS and the Arbitral Award of 2016. UNCLOS and the 2016 Arbitral Award have made clear that the Philippines exercise sovereign rights and jurisdiction on a Yungin Shoal, a low tide elevation within the Philippines' exclusive economic zone and continental shelf. China has no right or legal basis to prevent us from exercising such sovereign rights and jurisdiction. Follow up, um, could you clarify this statement of the president earlier um, to prevent like possible um, misinterpretation? Uh, the president mentioned during the ambush interview this morning, um, ang siyempre ang position, and I will quote, ang siyempre ang position ng China, sinasabi nila, quote, open quote, kami ang may-ari nito eh, kaya pinagtanggol namin. Tayo naman sinasabing hindi, kami ang may-ari nito, kaya pinagtatanggol namin. Kaya yun ang nagiging gray area ngayon sa pinag-uusapan. Do you agree with the President that there's a gray area on that? Considering that it involves the Ayungin Shoal, which is within our EEZ? Anyone could answer? No, uh, it would be hard for us to... Uh, to offer our views on what the president said. No, I, I think it would be best if uh, that answer is, uh, that question is answered by the office of the president. 
Next question, this side, please. Yes, we'll do it this way, yeah? Okay na, ayan. Zen Hernandez po, ABS-CBN. Ma'am, um, are we going to summon the Chinese ambassador uh, so that we can discuss this further? And of course, um, I would like to relay what I think the Filipino public would be asking at this point. How significant is it for us to file these diplomatic protests despite the fact that you know these incidents you know, keeps happening. Um, we already, we already uh, summoned, the department has summoned the okay. ambassador this morning. And what I actually recounted was what happened during the summoning of the uh, ambassador. And as we, as we, well, the ambassador was with us in the department, our ambassador in Beijing also called on the Ministry of Foreign Affairs mm -hmm to actually convey in strong terms our protests against what has happened in a union shore. Mm -hmm. The value of a note verbal is in terms of correcting narratives and in terms of protesting. Some people would say, where, is, where does that result? But it's important for us to do so. Mm -hmm. It's for, uh, important for the Philippines to continue assert what, it is right, what is rightfully ours to allow China to continue with its narrative will be contrary to what we are supposed to do or mandated to do. And the policy of this government is very clear. As they said, not one inch of our territory should actually be handed over to, our, to China. I haven't, I haven't. One question lang, ma'am. I just asked one question. The other question is for our gentlemen here. Um, can we clarify the, this accusation coming from the China Coast Guard that said we are actually bringing construction materials to a union? And maybe we can clarify as well if we will uh, keep the BRP Sierra Madre in a union show despite all these incidents. Just to address the question about the diplomatic protests, I think it is very important for the Philippines to continue filing this diplomatic protest, no matter what the reaction of China is. The diplomatic protests are for purposes of putting our record, our continuing objection to what the Chinese are doing. The moment we stop issuing this diplomatic protest, it can be construed by China and the international community as an abandonment of our position. So this government, in particular, the Department of Foreign Affairs will continue to file these diplomatic protests, even if it runs into the hundreds. Because precisely by doing so, we are reaffirming our commitment to the Philippine position that it is that the Ayungan Shoal and all other features which we occupy is our uh, are part of the of the uh, exclusive economic zone of the Philippines. We exercise sovereign rights and jurisdiction over those um, features. As to the second question, sorry, uh, can you repeat the question? Okay. By when we do supply, um, uh, when we do resupply missions, and I will ask uh, our colleagues here to also add to this. No, when we do re resupply missions, we are exercising our rights, no, under international law, because as mentioned, we have a permanently stationed Philippine Commission vessel, Navy vessel in Ayungan Shoal. Okay, so when we um, when we do supply, we provide them with what is necessary for the maintenance of the LS-57. So we provide food, we provide everything, provisions, no? irrespective of what China says. It is our right to bring whatever is necessary to maintain the, um, to, to maintain the station and to ensure that our troops there are properly provisioned. So, let me give the floor to uh, the other members of the panel. Based on the report provided to us, these are supplies that are needed by our people there to make sure that uh, they have food to eat, water to drink, and other supplies needed. Uh, yes, ma'am. Cecil Morelia of the French News Agency. Sir, uh, according to your account, the Chinese have been uh, um, uh, turning the screw, so to speak. 
uh, first they shadow us, and then they uh, hit us with water cannon. They try to ram us, and at one point they use uh, military grade laser, as I described it last February. What is the end goal of the Chinese government on Ayungin Shoal and Sabina Shoal, do you think? And is there anything practically that we can do to stop them from achieving that? May I ask uh, Commodore Tariela to answer first? Um, I'm sorry, sir, but uh, those questions uh, doesn't fall uh, for the Philippine Coast Guard to respond. I think those questions are not uh, so are not for the Philippine Coast Guard to respond, ma'am. Okay. I think that, that, that question is better directed to China. <laughs> I cannot speak for China. Yes, uh, I, I echo the sentiment raised by uh, Colonel Aguilar. Uh, I think the end goal of China is for China to actually explain. And for us, the Philippines, is to prepare for any eventuality. Are we going to build there if we lose our nerve and abandon the outpost? Okay. Uh, for the record, we will never abandon Ayungin Shoal. We are committed to Ayungin Shoal. In fact, no, if we're trying to determine the, although it's better for China to be the one answering this, but if we wish to speculate, no, they're, they're probably um, looking for weaknesses in the Philippine position or are trying to gauge our commitment to supply our troops in the shoal. And um, we are here precisely to reassure the Filipino people that as directed uh, by our president, the, we are consistent with uh, the president's directive during the SOL that you will not lose an inch of our territory. Next Good afternoon, ma'am. Question from our Zoom um, uh, participants from Global Daily Wear. Um, Ambassador, the former President Duterte visited Beijing previously and had some discussions allegedly involving operational aspects of the Philippine military. Were there discussions regarding the events past and present in the disputed waters? Do we have any information on what was discussed and why such dangerous acts are still being done by the Chinese Coast Guard? Uh, I'm not privy to the, in, the meeting in, in uh, Beijing, so I have no information to share on that. Ma'am, uh, Joanna Balyaran from GG Press. Ma'am, we've been uh, firing diplomatic protests against China. No? It's been over 400 uh, note verbales and protests. So, what's the next step for the Philippines, ma'am? Um, what are the other uh, forum or um, or platforms are we going to use to, you know, to to ask China to cease and desist from what they're doing in the West Philippine Sea? What is clear, Joanna, is that we will exhaust all uh, fora and exhaust all mechanisms so that we can bring to fore the Philippine position in terms of what's happening in our waters. That's for sure. So, but in terms of diplomatic protests, that's one diplomatic action that's taken. A summoning is another diplomatic action that's taken. Issuing a demarche is really another action that will be taken. But each case will actually determine what course of action will be undertaken by the DFA. And we cannot actually speculate, but we will actually say and stress that the commitment of the FA is that we, after an assessment of an incident, we will take appropriate action to actually protect and, and promote our interests. Hello, uh, Mara Cepeda from the Straits Times. A few days ago, China actually even offered to hold joint patrols in the West Philippine Sea to the military. How does this latest incident and their blatant disregard for our sovereignty play into the decision of the military and the Philippine government in general in considering um, the offer of China, which you know is something that's quite ridiculous given their actions there? Are we still going? Is it a, this? Does this incident in a way um, affect? How, is there a decision already? Will a joint patrol? Does it, a joint patrol with China? even make sense in the West Philippine Sea. 
it was just an informal uh, discussion. I don't know if it's even worth uh, to be discussed here. Second, we cannot make a decision on that issue. Third, I think you can ask the people, the Filipino people, on the reaction. Hi, sirs. I'm Camila Lamia from the New York Times. For the gentleman here, I'd like to ask, um, in, when it comes to the raw emissions, we're seeing more and more of Chinese vessels, Chinese maritime militia vessels. Are we planning to deploy more vessels, if that's even possible, or to increase the frequency of our Rore in Ayungin Shoals specifically? We have already increased the number of our assets in that area for the conduct of maritime patrols and, uh, of course, to do Rore missions. Certainly. As to the what we will do exactly, that we cannot tell you for security reasons. Sir, ilang vessels na po yung dinagdag and also maybe um, Again, the that, WPS? That question, ma'am, I'm sorry, is uh, I cannot answer because there are security considerations. Hi, sir. Sandra po, GMA7. Sir, there are opinions that the Ayugit situation is already a blockade against the military. Uh, so what is your... Um, response to that and what are we going to do and also um, does this already warrant um, any help or assistance from the U.S. Okay, let me answer the first part of the question and let me refer to DFA and the second part of the question. I, I think the incidents at Ayungin show last Saturday speaks for itself. No? The increased number of Coast Guard vessels, the movement in concert with the Chinese maritime militia, which effectively proves to the whole world that they are instruments of the Chinese Coast Guard or the Chinese Navy or the Chinese government. That these, are not, that these Chinese militia vessels are not uh, uh, disinterested participants or innocent individuals just who happen to be there. No? This was a concerted effort, as mentioned by Commodore Tariela, a concerted effort wherein our ships were effectively corralled no? So this was like a um, David versus Goliath situation because there were only two Coast Guard vessels and two Philippine supply boats, boats against six large uh, Coast Guard, Chinese Coast Guard vessels and two Chinese militia vessels and more uh, People's Liberation Army naval vessels um, at near proximity to the area. So technically, no, uh, this looks like a blockade of the Ayungin Shoal, okay? Uh, because the facts on the ground, as can be seen by everyone through the videos and the photos that we have shown today, uh, clearly showed the uh, increased deployment of the Chinese Coast Guard vessels. I think the most number, Tamaba Commodore, the most number in recent memory, okay? As uh, so the second question, may I turn over to the DFA? Does this warrant already the, uh, any help or assistance from the U.S. under the U.S. Mutual De uh, RPUS Mutual Defense Treaty? Uh, well, the United States has actually publicly affirmed uh, in its statement and in various statements and at the highest level that it has ironclad commitment to the defense of the Philippines pursuant to the Philippine-U.S. Mutual Defense Treaty of 1951. And here it, we deal with the concept of what constitutes an armed attack in, in the Pacific. Uh, but there is no clear definition as to what defines public vessels in the MDT and there are ongoing negotiations on it. In terms of your specific question whether it warrants the, the uh, invoking of the mutual defense, I think it's a bit early. Oops, sorry. Hi, uh, okay now. Hi, Ambassador Daza, Sophia Tower Cruz from CNA. Um, just to follow up uh, Ms. Sandra's question as well, um, you mentioned earlier that there is no clear definition as to what defines a public vessel under the MDT. With the great detail that you've also, that NTF has also shared regarding the recent incident, 
are we moving towards perhaps a definition of what a public vessel um, would be and what might that look like considering it was also mentioned that these were commissioned by the Philippine Navy, they were manned by officers of the Philippine Navy. Um, so yeah, what does this incident, what, what impact does it have on the MDT and kind of clarifying what constitutes ups. Okay, Thank you for that. The Philippines remains committed to the pursuit of an effective and a substantive code of conduct. Uh, China's coercive actions, continuing coercive actions, a reflection of a dire need for us to actually set up rules that would guide our actions at sea and prevent tensions from escalating in the region. Um, good afternoon, sirs and ma'am. Uh, Martin Sadongdong from Manila Bulletin. Uh, sir, uh, this question is addressed uh, to Colonel Aguilar and Commodore Tariela. Sirs, um, what's, the, what's the status of our personnel? Uh, how is their morale, especially those on board the BRP Sierra Madre and those who experienced the, the incident? We are always prepared for all eventualities and therefore the morale remains high. For the Philippine Coast Guard crew uh, of uh, BRP Malapasco and BRP Cabra, uh, their uh, morale remains high. Um, you still have the commitment of the Philippine Coast Guard that uh, despite of the danger, despite of uh, the dangerous maneuver that the China Coast Guard would always do every time that there is a resupply mission in Ayungin, the Philippine Coast Guard will still carry out the mission and support the armed forces of the Philippines. We, we have time for at least uh, two more questions, so if we can... Yes, this side and then yes. Can we give uh, the floor to those who have not yet asked questions, if that's all right? So the, a gentleman in the red, please. Um, question, um, Rainer from the Philippine Star, um, for, um, for Commodore Tariela. I'm curious lang, sir, um, does the PCG have a water cannon capability? Uh, so maybe we can also fire back. And are we, ano, are you allowed to, kasi they're also using it naman yata eh, di ba, on us. Can we also use it on them? Well, for your information, sir, the MRV vessels that came from Japan are also equipped with water cannon. But unlike the Chinese Coast Guard, we're not going to use that um, to, you know, drive away the China Coast Guard. We intend to use that in firefighting uh, whenever there is a maritime accident at sea. That's the usage of our water cancer. Hello po. Hi. Hi po, uh, spokes and uh, our gentleman here. I'm John Garner from Tribune. Uh, uh, a while ago, um, DJ Malaya gave us the sound bite that we've been waiting for. Uh, sabi niya, the, you, the we will never, or the Philippines will never uh, abandoned the Ayungan Shoal. Uh, given the current state of BRP uh, Sierra Madre, uh, we, will, we would like to know how we will, uh, how will the Philippines uh, maintain its position in the Ayungan Shoal given the current state of uh, the commission vessel there. Again, the BRP Sierra Madre is a Philippine Navy commissioned vessel. It's an active Philippine Navy commissioned vessel. Therefore, we will continue to resupply it we will do what is necessary to provide supplies and provision for our troops there. So as long as it, uh, so long and as long as it takes. Follow up lang po. Uh, during the adoption of the Senate resolution, which urges the DFA uh, to elevate the, uh, the China's incursions in the West Philippine Sea to international, uh, multilateral or international fora, uh, senators mentioned that isang bagyo na lang daw eh, Hindi na natin alam kung ano mangyayari doon sa BRP uh, Sierra Madre. Um, again, paano po natin mamaintain yung position natin doon? Thank you. We will do what is necessary to make, make sure that uh, it will continue to stand there. Uh, one last question. Uh, side. Yes, please. Yes, please. Hi, ma'am. BBC po. Um, the China Coast Guard just released a statement po. One of the lines says, China urges the Philippines to tow away the grounded warship from Ren Ai Reef and restore it to its original state. Um, do we have like 
a statement on this po. To tow away daw po. They want us to... Uh, to tow away. To tow away. Okay. Who is China Coast Guard to tell us what to do? So, um, are we okay with one more question? Are we okay with one more question? Yes, one more question then. Can you tell us a bit of history? How come, how, how did you, why did you put uh, the Sierra Madre on that uh, brief, on that shoal? And why did you put it there? I think I need to do a research on that, sir. I will uh, I'll go back to you uh, as soon as I have the information. Thank you. 1997, 1998. Uh, that, uh, as uh, closing, we'll give the floor now to ADG Malaya uh, for his closing remarks. Okay. In behalf of uh, Secretary Eduardo M. Año, the Chair of the National Task Force West Philippine Sea, first I'd like to thank our colleagues, uh, Yusek Nasa, of course, and our uh, friends from the Department of Foreign Affairs for hosting this meeting, this press conference here, my colleagues from the Coast Guard and the Armed Forces of the Philippines, the Department of National Defense, and of course the Presidential Communications Operations Office for their support to the NTFWPS. I'd also like to thank our colleagues um, from the media for your um, support and coverage of this uh, incident. No? Uh, may request lang kami sa NTFWTPS kasi kung minsan naririnig namin sa mga balita na parang uh, parang in question pa rin yung ating uh, yung in question pa rin yung ating pagmamayari sa mga sa mga features na clearly was already uh, awarded to us by uh, the by the 2016 arbitral ruling and the provisions of the UNCLOS kasi meron pang illegal daw illegal Wag na natin gamitin sana no, to, to our friends from the media. Um, the, the legal position of the Philippines is very clear and is supported by many countries. No? So we ask the support of the media to please provide the correct narrative and not fall into the narrative of the Chinese government in so far as this issue is concerned. And um, likewise, let me just uh, end this press conference by again commending the valiant men and women of our armed forces, in particular the Armed Forces Western Command, Naval Forces West, Philippine Navy, and of course the Philippine Coast Guard, for their daring, bravery, and commitment to duty, despite all odds and despite the um, increased tensions in the West Philippine Sea. Maraming salamat po. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you.